on videotape. An epic motion picture. At an unbelievable budget. Starring Rod Christensen and Marco Palmer in Hail Riders. Who are you calling Pam? Unfortunately, Pale Riders has been preempted by Sunday Night Live. What? Our show's canceled? What? What's it talking about? Sit down, sit down. I said your show was canceled and it's been replaced by something better. What could be better than gunfighting and getting in a brawl at the saloon and murder and revenge and good old-fashioned cussing? Yeah! Pale Riders will kill an evening, but the Axe Drama Company will point you to the man who can kill sin. Ah! It's something religious! <laughs> you just can't cancel our show! This is our show! Pale Riders! Gospel Light presents Sunday Night Live, starring the Axe Drama Company.
again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. What a beautiful day. Well, got to get my shop in order here. Let's see. Well, it looks like I need a vacuum here and dust everywhere. Oh, oh my first customer. Uh, may I help you, sir? Oh, I thought this was supposed to be a nice gift shop. This is a nice gift shop. Load of rubbish. I have been to the most elite gift shops of the world, and you have items in here that are fit for a bar. Gee, I'm sorry you feel that way, but... We try to keep things in here that the average person can't afford. Sir, you're beginning to bore me very quickly. Now, do you have anything worth over a dollar fifty, or should I take my business to Kmart? Well, uh, let's see, uh, oh yes, in the back, we have a 3,000-year-old Egyptian vase made of pure gold with an engraving of a hippo on it. A hippo? Oh boy, a hippo, golly gee, a hippo, but I don't want to look at a hippo. Now. Do you have anything special? Really, really special. Well, uh, how about this really rare pearl? That's it! That's what I've been looking for! Um, no price is too great. Uh, how much will you take for that? Are you sure you're willing to pay this much? You obviously don't know who I am. No, I do. I am... <laughs> I am Charles J. Staubenhopper III, and I have billions of dollars, and I can have anything I want, and I want that. Now, how much is it? It costs everything you own, Charles. <laughs> Funny, aren't we? But I've had enough laughing for one afternoon. Now, tell me, how much does it cost? Like I said, this costs everything you own. Isn't that rather steep? Well, depends on how you look at it. You see, we made this so everyone can have it. And it'd be lovely if everyone would take this. But you know, most people don't seem to see the real value. We want people who really want this. And it would take care of it and realize its true value. We don't want people who only half want it. It's all or nothing, Charles. But I have billions of dollars. I own yachts, airplanes, mansions, a hundred cars, and much, much more. I mean, my cornflakes are custom made by Mr. Kellogg's himself with his initials on each flake. I mean, my wife has a wardrobe made from pure buzzard feathers. How appropriate. I mean, I, mean, I have a solid gold nostril hair remover. I mean, now how about giving you two mansions? Six cars, your very own art museum, and your very own monogram t-shirt made of a real hyena fur, the kind of little alligator fur. Oh, and oh yes, your own watermelon farm. What do you say, bro? Can you dig it? I can see that you really don't want this. Of course I do! No, you don't. Otherwise, you'd be willing to pay the price. <laughs> I'm running up to my nose at this folderol. I'm taking my business elsewhere. Good day! <laughs> I don't even like watermelon. Oh, well. <laughs> well, let's get this place cleaned up. about this place. <laughs> Gee, I sprayed it with rage just a minute ago. Like that must be it. Say, what sign are you? I'm not a sign. I'm a person. Well, that's cool. Whatever makes you happy. <laughs> like, I'm either an Aquarius or a Pisces. I was born on the cusp. Mm. Gee, that must have been painful. <laughs> but can I help you? You look like you need help. Hey, you read my mind. Like, I'm looking for a gift. <laughs> Anything in particular? This is a gift shop. Yes! Something cosmic. It's for my yoga teacher. Something cosmic, huh? Well, uh, how about a telescope? Like, I don't know what I want, man. Why don't you show me some things and I'll feel the vibration? <laughs> <laughs> how would you like something that lasts forever? Oh, nifty nirvana, could I? <laughs> Here, look at this. Oh, wow. Oh, like that's it. Oh, like that goes with the flow. 
<laughs> How much is it? <laughs> How much do you have? Well, like, I only got 50 cents on me, man. Well, if that's all you have, then you can have this. I don't know, man. I may need this for a pay toilet. <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't you see the real value in this? People give all they own to possess this. Okay, I'll give you the 50 cents, but nothing more. You have something more? A car, a stereo, anything? Well, like, I have my bachelor pad and my Ouija board oh, and my great. Dungeons and Dragons game and my Deep Purple records, but you can't have those. But you don't understand. <laughs> Listen, all those things that you're trying to hold on to, you're going to lose. But this... This is forever. Well, like, I don't believe in forever. You don't? I believe in a constant now. <laughs> and I'm living in now. And because it's always now, everything's cool. <laughs> but what if you lose? 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 That's what I said. That's a disturbing concept, man. It is. I feel it's causing reptiles in the universal way. I better go. <laughs> I think he's a riptide in the universal way. Oh, well, it's getting late. I'm going to have to close up my shop. Doesn't anybody want the pearl of great price? I know it costs a lot, but it's worth it. Oh, one last customer here. Hey, this is a nice place you got here. A little what? hot, but it's a nice place you got here. Thank you. Must be all the lighting. <laughs> Looking for anything in particular? Well, my name's Joe Ordinary. I'm just an ordinary... Sorry, man. <laughs> I'm just an ordinary kind of guy. And you know, I'm not the richest kind of guy in the world. It's really hard to make the big bucks as a writer unless you get a really big break. <laughs> You're a writer. Oh, interesting. Had any books? Oh, I'm not a book writer. I write for a factory that makes nighttime wear, such as pajamas, lingerie, underwear, that sort of thing. <laughs> what sort of things do you write? Well, I write out the tags that go on the pajamas. I write words like 90% polyester or machine warm wash double dry. <laughs> the hard part, though, is getting that dumb little piece of paper in my stupid typewriter. But anyway, I'm not the richest kind of guy in the world, so I need something a guy like me can afford. Well, what sort of gift were you looking for, Joe? Well, something that won't wear out. Something eternal but affordable. Eternal but affordable. Joe, I have just the thing you've been looking for. You do? Oh, yeah. that's Here. right. Here, look at this. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> That's it. But I could never afford that. Sure you could. But all I got is $25. Well, That'll do, unless you have anything else. You see, this costs everything you own. You mean everything? Exactly. But everything's all I got. Well, <laughs> I know that. But actually, it's a very good deal. Because the things in your life that you're trying to hold on to, you're going to lose one day. But say you traded it all away for this. You'll gain everything, Joe, and it's forever. Well, that'd be dumb for me to hold on to things I'm going to lose, because after I lose everything, then what do I got? Nothing. Yeah. And anyway, that is so beautiful. Think you'd like to do it? Yeah, I'll go for it. Sign me up. Okay, Joe. You are a wise man here. Well, that's what they tell me. Uh, who are they anyway? <laughs> Let me fill out this purchase form. Would you please list your possessions for the Pearl of Great Price? Well, I have a whole collection of Don Ho records. Tiny Don... bubbles. And I also have... <laughs> This water pick for my pet canary, water and I have a 45 man pup for you. I love to go fishing. I have a pocket full of night crawlers. You want to see me? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> uh, wait, 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 wait. We'll just put down miscellaneous possessions at the top. That Gee, right. that's everything but the uh, kitchen sink. No, we get that too. Oh man, I hope my wife will be too upset. You have a wife, Joe? We'll take her also. <laughs> but, but we're married. Listen, I'm not a tyrant. You can live with your wife married. Nevertheless, you can no longer consider her just yours. You have any little ordinaries running around? Uh, you'd even take kids? Joe, this costs everything. No, no kids. How about dreams? <laughs> How about dreams and plans for the future? Everybody's got those. Well, I always dreamed of becoming a famous zookeeper. <laughs> and I also dreamed of retiring and settling down in a nice, beautiful condominium in downtown Oxnard. <laughs> well, uh, this is even going to cost you your dreams. But don't worry, Joe. 
You'll get wonderful new dreams that are in line with the plan for your new life. Gee, that means my life isn't mine anymore. That's right. But, uh, but, uh, what's going to happen to me? Well, Joe, whatever I decide from now on will be best. You sound like God. <laughs> Sign here, please. Joe Ordinary. Thank you, Mr. Ordinary. <laughs> here you go. The pearl of great price. Eternal life in Jesus is yours. Guard it. Oh, wow. It's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. This is great, man. Uh, just a minute. What? Would you take this? What do you mean? Eh, I'd like you to look after these things for me. But I thought I gave you that so I could have this. You did. You know what, Joe? I'm going to get rid of the things that you really don't need and the things that would get in your way, and you get to have the rest all back. You mean I get to have this and this? That's right. This is great! Wow! <laughs> Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest.
Honey, honey, wake up. I had the most horrible nightmare. Honey, wake up. Please. It's me, Bible Man. Look, my friend, at what the Bible says. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Bible Man, who said that? The Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says not to be anxious about anything, but with everything, with prayer and supplication, with petition, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. That ought to take care of nagging worry. The Bible, man, you don't have the pressures and worries that I have. You don't have the bills to pay. You don't know what it's like. My God shall meet all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap or gather into barns. Yet my God feeds them according to his riches and glory, and you're much more viable than ravens. <laughs> mistakes and the bad reputation I've made for myself. The Bible says that if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far God has removed our sins from us, and he doesn't treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquity. <laughs> Bible man, isn't it just more trouble and bad things? Well, God will be your refuge in time of trouble. He will surround you with songs of victory. He will surely keep you from the deadly pestilence and the arrow that flies by night. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou, God, art with me. stupid like I fail all the time. You know, Jesus said that you didn't choose me, but I chose you, that you should go and bear much fruit. If any man remain in me, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You know, the Bible talks about that God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the strong, the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. The, the, the humble things, the abased things, the things that are not, to nullify the things that are. Apostle Paul says that I rejoice in my weakness, in insults, in persecution, in trials, for when I am weak, then I am strong. In the name. Thanks a lot, Bible man. I feel so much better. You know, I'm just gonna stop just thinking about how many problems I have and worrying about everything. And I'm going to start thinking about what the Bible says and what the Bible says about me and what the Bible says about my problems. Holy Scripture Bible, man, I feel great. I'm going to get some sleep. All right, Charlie. Hey, but Charlie, as for me, I'm out to spread the word of God to other troubled souls. Praise the Lord!
I was just in the back trying out our new supersonic electronic toothbrush. Ah, uh, that's pretty noisy for an electronic toothbrush. Yes, but if you ever had a toothbrush that went 700 miles an hour, you can clean your whole mouth in one and a half seconds, cutting your overall personal hygiene time down by a bit. If you're a man on the go and you look like you are, this is the perfect gift for you. Right, that sounds kind of demonstrative if you ask me. <laughs> What's wrong with brushing your teeth fast? Oh, man? it's not just that, it's all these power man, tools. Man, what you come in here for? That's all I sell is power tools. <laughs> I don't know, they sound kind of noisy, a little bit spooky, if you ask me. Well, if you want to play with toys, there's a cute little store down the street. <laughs> but if you want something powerful, something to help you tackle the toughest job, it's here. We have electric saws and drills, tractors, trash mashers, cement mixers, meat grinders, onion slicers, you name it. If mice are a problem, we have a brand new gadget called a mouse kaboom! A mouse kaboom? Yep. We have made plastic explosives to look and smell like cheese. No more! We have to watch mice go through a slow, agonizing death and conventional traps. Mouse kaboom is quick and painless, and afterwards cleanup is minimal if you keep the doors and windows open. No, I'm not after a mouse kaboom. I bet you're a How, you ask? It's a mechanical cow programmed to pick up only weeds and leave your grass intact. Your kids can ride it around the yard. Move, move, Palestel, it's fantastic. Mister, 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 I'm a carpenter, and I'm looking to build a church, but I don't want to use these power tools. Come again? I said I want to build a church. But, but no power tool. Man, I don't get it. Everybody uses power tools. Oh, not me. But they're so quick and they make the work easier. Why don't you like to use power tools? Well, it's against the rules of our building union. You see, we've always done things a certain way, and these new loud devices would be too hard to get used to. Uh, besides, none of us knows how to use power tools. You think I work here to look pretty? I know how to use power tools, and if you send your people this way, I'd be glad to train them in the use of power tools. But don't you think these loud doohickeys would be a distraction from our true aim, which is to build the building? Don't you think they get in the way of everything that we're trying to accomplish, huh? Well, like I said, send your people here first. But the first thing I'm going to do is train you in the use of an alarm clock so you can wake up. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, but another objection I have is that I've heard of people getting electrocuted or they've had their fingers cut off by them thingamajigs. And I even heard one time one of them power saws escaped out of someone's hand cut the whole church in half. <laughs> Wilson, you put a power saw or power drill in the wrong hands, and he could cut your church in half or kill himself. Well, anything undisciplined, untrained person can be used for destruction, but if the tools are used right, they can build the most beautiful building without being a pain or distraction. Well, I know our union started out using power tools, but we've since gotten used to conventional methods. I was hoping you could sell me some conventional tools. Uh, I'm sorry, they're outdated and out of stock. Uh, hey, why don't you try the antique store back? Hey, that's a good idea. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Have a nice day. This gives me a great opportunity to try out my latest invention, the power Afroform. Just need some gas. Church of Religious Discipline. Mm, my name's Jake, and I sell power tools. I bet you'd be interested in our new pew warmers. They're insulated, electronic coils strung through your pew cushions that heat up the seats for your congregation. No, no, they're already too comfortable. Mm, how about our new butter up wafer maker for communion? Keep them coming back for more, Reverend. Uh, no, no. Oh, yeah. mm, what I'm looking for is tools to help solve an enormous problem. Well, you name the job, we got the tool. No matter how big, don't worry, it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Right. My church hasn't grown in 20 years. There's no one in our church under 70, and there's no change in the lives of those who do go 
I was hoping you could sell me some tools to help change things. Well, I know something about your problem, Reverend, but I don't have any tools to sell you. Could you order anything? Hey, I know someone who has all the tools you need, Reverend. And who might that be? The Holy Spirit of God. <laughs> yes, I've heard about tools that the Holy Spirit gives, and frankly, they're too radical, too noisy, and too distracting. Yes, when they're used out of line with the order given in Scripture, Reverend. <laughs> they give all of my people a heart attack. Uh, seriously, <laughs> Reverend, seriously, how do you plan on reviving your church without the Holy Spirit in its tool? Well, we're raising money with our bingo games. <laughs> our attendance should come up once we have our pancake feast. Well, that don't and giving <laughs> pins to those who attend ten straight weeks in a row should provide some incentive for it won't work. Um, maybe you could get me a joke book. Maybe that would liven up my sermons. Or would it be possible to get a bright, flashing neon sign saying, Come to church. Come to church. I'm sorry, Reverend. God's tools are really the only way. So maybe updated choir robes or an ad in the newspaper. Oh, I was so hoping you could be of more help. Bless you. Um, good day. Good day. Oh, well. You know, it's too bad they killed that fly earlier. Because if I had a fly, I would show him what my atomic fly swatter can do. Hey, he's back! <laughs> hit the jackpot the day just shopping around, you know, yeah. hey, my name's Joe Ordinary. I'm just an ordinary kind of guy. The Joe Ordinary, the writer? Some of my favorite pajamas have your work on <laughs> You'd be interested in a new typewriter, huh, Joe? No, no. I just got born again, and I've been given a big, super humongous job to do. What job is that? Well, I'm supposed to tell everyone I can about Jesus, and pray, and live a holy life, and come against the devil with all his nasty tricks. You need power tools, Joe. Oh, I know it. I mean, let's face it. I'm not a very good talker, and I don't think the devil's too scared of me, and I need help when I pray. That's why I came here for some power tools. Well, let me tell you about the Holy Spirit. He's got every tool you need to do the job. You're kidding. No. Uh, he'll give you courage and help you to pray and help you to remember Bible verses. He'll give you the power to lead a holy life in the God and give you tools that will flabbergast people who don't believe in tools to build a church. Nino Burrito. <laughs> <laughs> like there's these tools called wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge? Yeah. Oh, I couldn't have those. Why not? Well, I flunked freshman algebra for one thing. And spelling, I hated spelling. I couldn't spell worth beans. And there's a lot of other words I couldn't spell either. <laughs> but anyway, I don't think I can have wisdom and knowledge. No, no, no. This isn't natural wisdom and knowledge. And it's not. No. <laughs> this is when God shows you something that you couldn't have known unless God had shown it to you. Then God gives you his own wisdom so you know how to deal with the problem. That's where that tool comes in. Well, that's really great. I think I need that tool because, let's face it, I'm hurting upstairs. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> then there's the tool of prophecy. Prophecy? Yes. I knew really a lady with that tool. You knew a lady with yeah, that tool? Yeah, I paid her $5 to look at my hand and tell me what was going to happen to me. Oh, she no. said I was going to have a dark future, but my future brightened up after I washed my hands. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Joe. No, listen. Palmistry. <laughs> Fortune-telling, ESP, tarot cards, spiritualism, and all the like are all tricks of the devil Woo! to lead you away from God. <laughs> God's tool of prophecy is holy and will always glorify Jesus. Prophecy is speaking a, a word from God that will encourage, exhort, and build up the church or an individual. God can tell you about the future and about someone's life, but never anything that's none of your business, Joe, and only something that help God's people. That's really great. But does God have any tools to help solve big problems? Yep, there's the tool of faith, which is actually God's own faith, which he will share with the person to do a miracle. God gives you the faith to move a mountain, Joe. Oh, that's wonderful, because my wife, she makes these slurpy noises when she eats. It drives me up the wall. I need faith. 
to believe that her mouth will be reconstructed. <laughs> no, Joe, listen, it's usually much more important than that. Uh, uh, then there's the tool of the discerning of spirits. Is that like wine tasting? <laughs> no, Joe. Hello, are you in there? Joe, the devil is tricky. And he can perform all kinds of false signs and wonders and snatch all sorts of people preaching lies. You need to know what's behind the miracle, behind the preaching. That's where that tool comes in. There's also a tool to help you pray. It's called uh, praying in tongues. It's speaking in tongues. It's praying in a language you never had to learn before. You mean like Swahili or French or Eskimo or supercalifragilisticexpialidocious? Even though the sound of it is something quite precocious? And if you say it loud enough, the church may want to stone us. No! No, no, no. no, no, no. Listen, when you pray in that language and speak in that language, you're speaking an unknown tongue. You're praying to God. You're building up your most holy faith and edifying yourself. And it's a weapon against the devil, Joe. It's really important. Well, are there any more tools? Sure, there's many more. God will give you whatever tool you need to do the job. Well, how do I get those tools? I need those tools in my life. Let's pray. Lord, you see Joe's heart. You know he's born again and he's a Christian. He's given his heart to you. But Lord, baptize him in your spirit. Anoint him to do the job. Amen. Wow. Wow what? Feels like a rocket went off on my heart like I got set on fire. Well, the Bible says that Jesus would baptize people with the <clears throat> Holy Spirit and with fire. And I feel like shouting in a bunch of words that don't make sense. Wow. Joe, go out and bless people and be God's witness. Whoa, this is heavy duty. Whoa. <laughs> The rich man also died and was buried. In hell, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. This is hell, the abode of the damned the eternal prison of those who have died uncleansed from sin, having rejected God's forgiveness and mercy in order to retain self-sufficiency, pride, and sin. This is hell. It's too late. <laughs> Are you Mr. Rich Man? Leave me alone! Leave me alone! I don't want to go into the lake of fire! No! No! I'm not making you go into the lake of fire! You're not? No! I'm just a man! No! No! You can't be a man! No! No! I'm a mortal flesh and bone man! You're a demon! Go away! Can't you see I'm in enough torment? I'm a reporter from the world. Your story needs to be told to the living. No! No, it's not allowed. We can't talk to each other here, or console one another, or make eye contact with each other. We're all alone. So this is the end of man's selfishness, all this loneliness and darkness. A man's sin drives him away from God and from others, and he has only himself to live with for all eternity. Then why are you here if not to add to my misery? I'm not here for your evil or for your good. I'm here for the sake of the living. I, but I'm not allowed to show you sympathy or comfort. Oh, then take me with you. Take me back. We can save them all. We can tell them my story. You know I can't do that. Oh, but I'm very rich. I'll give you whatever you want. Rich is beyond your wildest dreams. I have maid servants and, and men servants Man, and a palace. Even if it were in my power, do you think I'd take a bribe? Bribe? No, no, no. I, I was thinking of them, those poor hellbound sinners. I was two thousand years in hell. Has it made you bit a bit less selfish, or less a greedy man, or less a liar? Has it? My weaknesses didn't go away when I died. Why do you think hell lasts forever? What do you think the fires of hell were made of? But if I were to go back, I turn over a new leaf. I think of the souls we could save. I give half of what I own to the poor. Oh, Mr. Richman, you own nothing. You're dead, and in hell, remember. Go 
course I remember. One of the curses of hell is that I can remember and that my mind is intact. Every minute of eternity, I'm reminded of why I'm here and where I am. I may fool you, but I can't fool myself. Brings up an interesting point, Mr. Richmond. How do you keep your mind intact in all this isolation and loneliness and darkness? Every prisoner here is an indestructible spirit with memories and emotions that never fade and nerves that never go numb. How I long for insanity. For in it, I would retreat to the comforts of, of my mother's womb or, or convince myself I was a bird gliding on a, on a cool breeze. But I'm cursed with perfect logic and an understanding that never fails. I wish the pain would just knock me out. I'd give one of the jewels of my formal crown for a minute of sleep. But this hellish body can endure pain endlessly and never tires. Only on earth is madness permitted. <laughs> and my madness was to disbelieve God and spurn his holy words. This seems an awful punishment for failing to come to terms with God intellectually or failing to understand some church's creed or understand some doctrine. No, no. Children and mentally handicapped souls can know enough of God. It's not what I didn't know that condemned me here. It's what I did know. I, I lived my life a prideful, egocentric fantasy, denying God any say-so in my life, like a dying man living in the denial of certain death. Mr. Richman, of all the dreaded sinners in hell, he chose your story to tell the world. Yet you weren't a murderer, a child molester, or some kind of thief, so what kind of man were you? <laughs> I was an idolater. Oh, I would have been horrified to find some hideous heathen statue of some pagan god on my property. Yet all the while, I was putting my wealth before God. I loved the, the power and the prestige and the image that that money gave me. But in my illicit affair with my riches, I divorced myself from God to worship at the temple of my ego. Mr. Rich Man, we all stand condemned with you. We've all broken God's laws. We've never given him the respect, place, or worship that he deserves. We're, we've, we've all had idols. We're all liars. We're all terminally selfish. Oh, in our own eyes, we think we're maintaining status quo, and even with all this talk of sin, think ourselves good. But when we look at the mirror of God's perfect law, we see what wretches we are and how even our good actions can be motivated by corrupt desires. Are we all going to end up like you? No. Oh, no, please. Tell them to turn now. God has made provision for all men's sin. At the time the law was given, an animal sacrifice was required for any lawbreaker. That animal shed its blood as a as a graphic reminder for the penalties of sin. There's been one final sacrifice for all man's sin. It's the Lord Jesus Christ, who died a bloody death for all man's wickedness. He is the sinner's escape. But they are all racing against death. Death came to me suddenly. It was at the height of, of a wild party thrown in my honor. There was the best of everything. Wine, women, and song. It was close to midnight when I felt a, a terrible burning in my chest. I remember falling forward and knocking over a table. I had the sensation of floating through mists of darkness. And I opened my eyes. And I, what did you feel? Dormant! 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 Dormant of mine and spirit! and regret. But, but the most tormenting thing of all was I could see paradise. all the riches I could have had and lost for eternity. I saw Abraham 
and the bigger Lazarus. He used to beg at the, at the gate of my, at my palace, longing for the crumbs I, I threw to my dogs. He was starving. What if he were starving? That was his tough luck. Now, now I'm the beggar and, and he is the rich man. Abraham stood with that beggar. He stood with Lazarus like a proud father. And the two of you spoke across that chasm. What did you say? I, I said, Abraham, Abraham, I'm in unbearable torment in these, this heat and these flames. Please, please send the bigger Lazarus to dip his finger in water and, and cool off my tongue. But he said, no. I said, please, please send someone to warn my brothers about this place, please, please. But he said, if they wouldn't believe Moses or the prophet, they wouldn't even believe someone rising from the dead. Now I would give everything I own to exchange places with a beggar. Mr. Richman, you own nothing. God revealed himself to you through his creation, through your conscience, through the law, through his workings with Israel. After you, he revealed himself to the whole world through the Lord Jesus Christ, who lived here and died a bloody death, and then he rose from the dead. You had no excuse. Don't you oh. think I know that? For eternity, I will live with that. God didn't intend for me to be here. We damned ourselves by our defiance of God's will and excluding him from our life. The story will keep many others from coming to this place. It's time for me to return now. No, no, don't go, please, please, please. For me, it's late. Wherever Torm is, wherever pain, wherever not knowing the love of God that I could have. It's too late for me. And I will scream for eternity with a voice that will never go out. And I'll count my eyes that will never be blinded and gnash a tongue that will never blind me. It's too late. It's too late. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to End Time Sports. We have an exciting program for you today. Right here, live, you'll see one of the matches of the ages. A world overcoming, victorious child of God will take on the enemy of his soul and the deceiver of the world, Mr. D. It's an interesting pair off to say the least. The opponent, Mr. D, lost his world title and the keys to death and hell when the Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead. The child of God, however, has a greater advantage. Having the word of God as a weapon against lies, faith that can move mountains, a direct line to the throne room of God, the indwelling counselor, God's Holy Spirit, the baptism of power of the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit, and much, much more. However, even with all this, Mr. D is a clever liar, and our champion could be deceived if he believes those lies. So let's bring out our champion now. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Saki Valblawa! <laughs> No, 
I was a fighter in the slums, just scratching to get by. I got my big break when I felt someone who believed in me. Someone who believed I was a champion, that I was a winner, that I could be somebody. You must be talking about your Jewish manager. Oh, he's not only my manager, he's my lord and savior. I was a tramp, and he made me a tramp. Yeah. Saki, is your wife watching on TV right oh, now? Oh, yeah, she's at home watching me on TV. Yo, Andrew, it looks pretty good, huh? <laughs> boop, 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 but she loves that song. <laughs> Mr. Deep. I just want to thank the Lord that I'm not fighting alone. Without my manager, I wouldn't have a chance. But he'll show me exactly what to do so I can win. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking to Saki Balboa, a world champion. Thank you. <laughs> I challenge our champ for his world title is the destroyer of nations, father of lies. Mr. D. for today's boxing event. And here they come now, Saki Blah Blah and his challenger, Mr. D. Saki, Saki, 
Apostles Creed. I thought I'd find you here. What are you doing here? Let's just say I come to do a brother a favor. Listen, Apostles, did someone put you up to this? As a matter of fact, someone did. It was the Holy Spirit. I can help you regain your title back, Sock. Thanks, but I'm through fighting. I've decided to retire. Listen, man, you weren't meant to lose, and you can't live with it. I know the times when I've lost. I don't want to know nothing from nobody, not even my kids. Every fighter knows that hurt inside, Sock. All right, will you tell me one thing? How come I lost? You got soft. You got too comfortable when things were good, and you slacked off in your prayer and your Bible reading. Sock, you need to get the single eye. Single eye? You know, your eye needs to be single on Jesus. Things got going good for you, and you lost your first love for Jesus Christ. Man, and you need to get that first love back. I want that back, apostles. I want my first love back. OK, then get on your knees. <laughs> all right, now this is where it all starts. Enter in with praise. <clears throat> Go before the throne boldly, Sock. Identify your problem and bind it. <clears throat> Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Pray in the spirit, Socky. Come on, man. This is a war we're in. Well, I'm, just too, I'm just too tired right now. I've got too much on my mind. I'll pray tomorrow. Tomorrow? Tomorrow? Hey, man, there is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. You got to work while it's still day because night comes when no man can work. What's the matter with you? Will you tell me something? Ever since I've known you, you've never given up on anything. So why do you want to quit now? You want to know the truth? I'm afraid. OK, I'm afraid. You want to bring me down? OK, I'm afraid. Well, what are you afraid of? I'm afraid of losing what I've got. I'm afraid of getting knocked down again. I'm afraid of becoming a failure again. Oh, Saki, you can't carry those fears around inside of you. If you give up your life for Jesus, you'll get it back. Hey, Adrian, when did you get so tough? Hey, I live with a fighter. All right, give me my Bible. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> read, Saki, read. Read the whole passage. Think about it and say it. You need to speak and eat God's word. It's like food. Jesus used the word of God against the devil. Hey says right here, my faith overcomes the world. All right, look at this one. It says right here, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that one. Yeah. It says right here that I've been made more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, my Lord. All right. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Paul. So thanks for helping me. Yeah. says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Yeah. The Bible yeah. says that I have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Yeah! yeah. given power to turn over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. D, I want back what you stole from me. Yeah. What you talking about, Chuck? You want your face beat? Yeah, I got a lot of them. Lot of them. What you talking about, Chuck? You want your face beaten in some more? I can't be beat. You got beat because Jesus came to destroy your works on the cross. But you ain't Jesus, chump. And I beat you like a dog and I do it again. No, I got beat because I believe you're alive. Like I'm going to ask. I lie. I told you the truth, chump. You weak, bitch, and you're a loser. No, I wasn't a conqueror. I'm right with Jesus. My sins are forgiven. I'm a brand new person. But in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, get out of here. Yeah. I'm so glad we had this time together Just to have a laugh and kick the sinner Wait, wait hold it, hold it. That's not, that's not the ending theme song that we have for the, for the tape, is it? We don't, ha we don't have a theme... Uh, sorry. <laughs> we don't have a theme song for the ending of the video, but that's okay. I'm Rod Christensen, Marco Palmer, directors of Axe Drama Company. We just want to thank you for viewing our 
video Sunday Night Live, and we pray that the Lord has blessed you and that you've been encouraged and built up in your faith. You know, God has called every man to account for his life. You know, the Bible talks about that it has been appointed for man to die once and then the judgment. Everyone will stand before God and account for his life. You know, for the person who's given his life to Jesus Christ and has the fruit in his life to back up that decision, that time that they stand before God will be a time of great joy. But for the person who has not made that decision, who has rejected the gospel and, and the love of God, they will be rejected eternally from God. And if, you're, if you've seen something on this video and you've never made a decision for Jesus Christ, I want to pray with you. I just want to lead you in a prayer because that's the most important thing you can do is have a walk with Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Just say this prayer in your heart. Father God, I believe that you sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for my sins. I believe you are the Lord, and Father, I repent, I give my heart to you, and I give my life to you. Lord, it's not my good works, it's not my church attendance, none of the good things that I've done in my life can make me worthy of, of being your child, but Lord, I believe that the work you did on the cross, the things that you did for me, that, that I can be born again, and Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart to make me brand new, in Jesus' name, amen. You know, if you pray that prayer, the Bible says that you're born again, that if you really sincerely mean it from your heart, that God will come and live inside of you and will abide with you. And through the Bible and through a good church, God will lead you in your growth, in your walk as a Christian. And so we just want to thank you. We want to thank you for viewing this video and for the things that, that God has done in our lives. We pray that you watch this and that you glean from these truths that God has given us and that you will be refreshed in your faith. From Axe Drama Company, this is Rod Christensen and Marco Palmer. God bless you and good night. If you want more information about Axe Drama Company, when we're going to be in the area, or if you would like us to come to your church, your youth group, whatever. We minister in prisons. God has opened doors and we go there. If you want more information about that, then write us because we're planning tours to Europe, across the country. God has blessed us and when we, He opens the door, we go there. So for more information about when we're going to be in your area, you can write us or call the numbers that you've got there.